What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Cal One-on-One Podcast right here on Cape Atlantic Live. I'm your host, Nick Costco, and today I am joined by Lower Cape May Regional Football Head Coach Lance Bailey. Coach, appreciate you joining me as always as we are getting that much closer to the high school football season, just about a month plus away. And, you know, I'll just jump right into it here with you. You, know, you guys had a pretty good season last year by a, at least the record standards, you know, six and three in 2022. I got, I'm got. i curious, how do you build off of a positive season for your Caper Tigers going into now 2023, where there probably are a little bit more expectations? Uh, it, it's actually pretty easy. We, we, we were, we were seven and three. We didn't six and two at the cut. We, we missed out getting in on a, I don't, I don't know what level of, tiebreaker you want to say three four or five of getting in so the motivation for our kids we we only graduated three kids last year i got 22 seniors coming back the level of motivation is is to get to that level is is easy with this with this group you know we want to get into the playoffs we want to win a division you know uh continue to build on that uh because even at seven and three i think we we as a group as a staff and as a team i think we left you know some meat on the bone yeah, no doubt. So when you look at that meat on the bone, so to speak, I mean, you mentioned the motivation. I feel like it's kind of easy, especially for these high school kids, especially the ones that were there last year, the veterans that are coming back here in 2023. They felt not that you guys were jobbed out of a playoff spot, but obviously with the way the rules are set up, the PowerPoints, all the tiebreakers, all things considered, you you must feel like there's you could have done a lot more last year and that would probably carry over into this fall, no? Correct. We If we would have, you know, we, there's some, we left some, as I said, meat on the bone. If if we were taking care of business last year, we would have we wouldn't have had to rely on a tiebreaker, uh, and that's kind of where we're, we're our jumping off point moving forward is you know we we take the proverbial one game at a time, one practice at a time. We're going to get better each and every practice, try to get one percent better. But the long range goal is to not beat yourself and not put yourself in a in a, in a situation where other people are deciding your fate. So let's take care of ourselves so we can get to our, our end goal. No doubt. I mean, do, do you feel there's a override? Is, is there a dark cloud, so to speak, or is there extra pressure knowing that playoff success has mostly eluded lower Cape May, especially recently? And I feel like last year you guys were knocking right on the door and you could have maybe done something special. Is that, is that kind of a thorn in the side, or is it something that you just kind of shove to the side and say, you know what, as you mentioned before, the one game at a time mentality? Yeah, I don't think it's a thorn in the side or a dark cloud. It, it's just, it is what it is. It's reality. And we have to, if we, if we're resting on that dark cloud, then we're not going to get, keep continue to get better as a unit, as a staff and so forth. We just got to continue to, to get better every day. We've, we've got great participation so far in our workouts. We're just finishing our third week uh, and the kids are motivated. So I, I don't think looking back is only going to get us in trouble. Yeah. We're only looking forward at this point. So when you look forward, are there any changes in game plan, scheme, philosophy, or do you kind of carry over what you've been doing over the past couple of years just with some fine-tuned tweaks? Uh, I think we've had a little staff turnover, okay? So uh, I'm back to the offensive co coordinator uh, this year, So, but we're still running the same system, but we've tweaked some things. Uh, tweaked some things uh, that are, we're able to get in and out of cer certain situations easier. Uh, defensively, we'll be similar to what we are. We, uh, uh, Billy Damiano is back as our defensive coordinator, but it's more of a tweak and more of a building on top of what we did last year because the kids know the system. So we're able to expand on that and, and get a little deeper into, you know, some of the schemes that we would like to get, get to. So looking at what you guys have been able to accomplish on the field, you mentioned the participation numbers have been very good so far through the summer. And I'm always curious with smaller schools, especially in this area, you know, the Cape Atlantic League. Well, I mean, of course, now it's it's, it's been West Jersey Football League right. for almost a decade, of course, as I mentioned to a couple other coaches already. But the, the, the same core group of teams that are still kind of playing with each other, you have the bigger schools that are in group five, group four. You have guys like you or schools like you, which are group two schools, smaller schools, smaller confined area. But you mentioned the participation numbers are very good so far. What, what, what other challenges do you guys face as a small school compared to some of the other local schools that maybe have bigger enrollments or their, their choice schools so they can pick and choose from other spots in the two counties? And obviously the private schools have, are able to pick and choose as well. So what kind of difficulties, difficulties do you guys face as a smaller school? Well, as a smaller school, we, you know, numbers are always going to be 
an issue. And depth is always going to be an issue. Uh, a few injuries at a smaller school, it could really, it could really hurt a program in a, in a key area. Uh, so at some, sometimes you only have, you're one deep in certain areas and certain positions. We're fortunate enough now uh, with a certain, with a greater percentage of our roster that we're deep in certain areas. Now that that's a positive because we're deep in an area, but we can also then move kids around to a, to another area, which I think at bigger schools, you don't have, you don't have to do that because you're naturally deep three, four, five deep at, at each individual position. We don't have that luxury. So that's a challenge of moving kids around when you do have depth in order to fill spots where you don't have depth. And we're, we're right now, we're, we're in a luxury in a few spots where we have some depth, but again, where there are some where we don't. So it's a constant moving around, you know, putting the puzzle together, uh, even with the solid numbers we have out. You, we're still a small school and, and numbers are always going to be, be an issue. And, you know, next year will be, will be more so because we have 22 kids graduating this year versus three that we had last year. Do you think it's, at least for this year, do you think it's a blessing in disguise, so to speak, in the sense of you have guys that you, you, know, you mentioned the luxury in depth at certain positions, but you have the flexibility to move some of those other kids who maybe are not the, the de facto starter at X position, but they can go to a B or C. Right. And do you almost think it makes these kids more talented or, or develops them even more because they can play multiple, multiple positions and it gives you guys different looks and different options against certain teams, depending upon the matchup. Oh, absolutely. It, 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 it enables us to, to take our running back and play him at wide receiver, a wide receiver play him at running back. Uh, it's, and, and it, it helps because the kids know the system too. And a system we run, it's very easy to plug kids in and it's not a challenge, so, so to speak, that, oh, now I got to know a brand new position. They, it's the way our system is set up. It's, it's an easy plug and play. Uh, so, you know, it's, we're finding that, that transition easy uh versus years past where we have other systems in where that was hard to to take a poor kid from a wide receiver to a running back and and so forth or a, a defense a safety to a to an outside linebacker so forth so as you look forward into the fall of 2023 for our listeners and viewers out there who are some of these guys that you're highlighting through the summer got return returners veterans obviously you mentioned the huge senior class you have for this season, who are some guys that you that, that that fans should be on the lookout for? I believe uh, quarterback Hunter Ray is back. I believe he is a senior this year as well. So I, I know he's one guy that I've been looking out for, or at least trying to keep in my keep my eye on this summer. Who are some of the other guys out there? Oh, uh, you got you got Hunter Ray as, as you mentioned, the quarterback, and uh, he'll play in the secondary, the other corner at safety. Uh, Isaiah Carr Wing, who's our running back, he's our weak side linebacker. Ogre Nunez, he's another running back. Uh, Logan Haggerty is our middle linebacker. He's also our H back. Uh, Braswell Thomas, our wide receiver, defensive back. Uh, we got a we we got a number. Quentin Hagen up front. Ronnie Ronnie Neenhold up front. Uh, we got a couple young guys. Uh, Will Garrow who will be a sophomore. Started last year as a freshman for us. Uh, Cody Lewis, inside linebacker, playing center for us. We 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 got some good experience coming back. And, and I, I know I may have forgotten a few kids, but I mean, we got kids that, that, that know, you know, that are able to, that you're going to hear of, let's put it that way. <laughs> I feel like you, I feel like you guys have a lot of Chuck Bagnerics out there, all, all the 60 minute men out there. I mean, that, that has to be something these kids, your program and yourself and your entire staff, obviously take a lot of pride in. Absolutely. Absolutely. These kids will, will, will be pride in getting these kids into shape through the weight room, which we, again, was mentioned earlier, great attendance, uh, and then we get them in shape in the weight room. We go outside. We are we have to be in cardiovascular condition because these kids are playing offense, defense, and special teams. It's a challenge for us as a staff. When do we get them a blow? We got to find we got to find times. And sometimes they're they're it's just not possible. But we, we talked about it this morning at practice. Uh, when and how, or the scenarios when we're going to be able to get someone a blow. When when are we not going to be able to get someone a blow? But that's a challenge of going back to a small school versus a, a big school. No doubt. So obviously the playoff success, as we alluded to before, that is the ultimate goal, making the playoffs, winning the division. Obviously the ultimate goal would be to win a sectional title and obviously keep going further Absolutely. and further along the NJ state playoffs. So, so to get to at least that, the, the, the sectional brackets for you guys, you know, sometimes teams will schedule 
bigger opponents that try to increase their strength of schedule. There's ways to, I don't want to say manipulate the PowerPoints the way right. the formulas are, but you know, obviously smaller schools will, will play bigger schools. Sometimes the bigger schools will beat up on a smaller school or you know take a chance with a smaller school that's really good. Maybe it's a quality win, or at least it, maybe it's not enough PowerPoints. So there are multiple ways to look at your schedule. So when you look at your schedule, you're, you're playing some of the old school Cape Atlantic teams. Right. You're playing some other small schools in the area. I mean, ha, ha, when you look at your schedule, do you think it sets up for, you know, if we take care of business here, A, B, C, all the way down to Z, we are going to make the playoffs in South Jersey Group 2? Oh, I think so. I think adding a week zero game against Bridgeton, you know, Group 5 school, uh, again, we got to take care of business. Uh, if we would have taken care of business last year, the way the schedule was set up, we were in. So I really don't think anything's going to change as long as we take care of business. Uh, you know, adding that zero week game, I think was a priority for us. Uh, I, I, I valued our, our week off back to being a small school on the 30th of September. Uh, we had many kids drop, get hurt last year, week eight on when we didn't have a buy. Uh, and I valued that buy not only for the, for the kids and their health and their safety, but for the staff too. We can, we get that week, we can, then we got a three week stretch before playoff start. Um, but yeah, I think our schedule is, is, is good. I think if we just take care of business, we should, we should be okay. There's been a lot of talk about the way the high school football schedule in this state has been set up and been tweaked over the past couple of years. Obviously they added the overall state champion for each enrollment group starting last year. You've seen some local schools get that for obviously mainland and Milva played right. for the state semifinal last year. And you saw Milva play for a state final last year. When you look at the way the schedule's uh, designed now, obviously the, the Thanksgiving game is almost gone throughout the entire state. It's right. been moved, and now week zero has been moved up to that last week of August. Sometimes even it almost seems like it almost seems like it's a week before the end of August. Uh, yeah. you, you guys are playing your first game. Do you like the fact that it's been moved up? As I know traditionally, especially when I played. Those last two weeks of August, you're finishing up camp and you have about maybe two or three scrimmages before your first game post Labor Day. How do you feel about the way it's been moved up now into really the summer, even before school starts? Uh, yeah, we're playing two games before we get in, before we have our you know, kids are in class for the first time. Uh, I think the state needed to 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 get to a state championship, uh, overall state champion like surrounding states have. Uh, is this? The right way? I, I don't have the answer for that. You know, it's, it, I think they're doing the best they can with that. Uh, I mean, other schools, I was talking to a, a coach the other night down in Florida. He's, they start the week before us. So they're starting like double zero week. Wow. Uh, so we're, you know, it's, I think it's the change that everyone is, is, has to get accustomed to. And it's a shock, but it is. And when school, when we got out of school, it, it, I mean, you're right back in it. And, and it makes for a summer, what summer? You know, you're really, <laughs> <laughs> you're back to work right away. And, and if you, and if you're, if you're not doing that, you're not, you're not doing right by the program. You're not doing right by the, by the kids, but it is what it is. Uh, we got to play by the rules and you know, we'll, 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 we'll give it our best. Yeah. See, just yesterday I was doing this, you know, going into my senior year, this is over 10 years ago. Now I'd be looking at, you know, June, it's like, all right, June school's over. Now you can start football. And then all of a sudden game one is right. It is the first week of September. And now it's, you, know, you just mentioned before, I mean, you're talking about the mi middle of August. You say, all right, what's our game plan for week zero? We have to start oh, yeah. the timeline. Oh yeah. The timeline, it moves everything up. Uh, I told the kids our first day, we were eight weeks, our first practice, or we were eight weeks from completing our second scrimmage. And that was June 19th. Wow. That, just, that puts things into perspective. It, it, it absolutely does. So you mentioned how this team obviously brings back a heavy senior class. So veteran leadership generally means there can be a lot of success for a team. You have a lot of talent that's coming back, particularly at some of the skill positions that you mentioned, the big boys up front, good uh, defenders as well, the linebacker position. So I'm curious because, again, you mentioned how Lower Cape May kind of got back on the map last year. You know, just missed out on the playoffs. Of course, it was due to tiebreakers. Would have been exciting to see the Caper Tigers, of course, in a postseason setting. Right. Getting there in 2023 – and winning a playoff game, you know, getting to the sectional semifinals, maybe even making it to the sectional finals in group two. What would that mean for this school that hasn't really seen, you know, the championship championship success of other, even other schools in the County or even in Atlantic County throughout the traditional Cape Atlantic teams it, because obviously it, it, it's been proven these schools from South Jersey can make big playoff runs, win right. state championships. What would it mean for lower Cape May to say, you know what? We have a playoff win. We have a sectional title now. Uh 
I don't know if you can really measure that. I mean, it would be <laughs> it would be huge. First of all, we we don't have a we don't have a playoff win in school history. That's step one. Uh, that that alone in itself would be would be huge. Uh, but again, we're, I'm going to resort back to you know one game at a time and so forth. But if we a crystal ball looking at it, that was ever came to fruition, I I don't know if I could measure what that would mean to this community and 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 this school. It would obviously be incredible down here i think there's gonna be uh parades all throughout the, that'll rival <laughs> memorial day and fourth of july down in that county. absolutely if you guys even just win a playoff game it would be great and I, i'm personally i would love to see it and be on hand for that one as well so one more for you coach head coach lance bailey with me uh, from lower cape may regional on cal one-on-one right here on cape atlantic live on youtube coach i'm talking about i'm talking now to your fan base talking to your school your community the program you represent your message to these fans, your kids, the school, everybody around Cape May County, what is your message to, to them ahead of this football season here in 2023? Uh, it would be to appreciate what what these kids are doing. Uh, it's You can show up Friday night and watch a game, but understand what's, what they're putting in and this coaching staff is putting into this. These kids are showing up 45 plus strong at 6.30 in the morning, Monday through Thursday. And you got a special group of young men here that are that are representing the high school, the middle school, the community, and they're putting it all on the line. And they, uh, I think, that blue collar work ethic is what was what we've installed in them. And I think if the community could could see that, and I'm uh, that's why I'm telling you that, telling you this now understand that these these young men are working their tails off and they're working their tails off for themselves they're working their tails off for the school the program and the community and they're, they're gonna they're gonna lay it on the line for 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 their for their for their teammates their coaches and their community if there's anybody who loves hard work and that blue collar mentality it is me so i'm looking forward to watching you guys in lower cape may regional football uh dominating the scene down there in cape may county looking forward to seeing what you guys can do against bridgeton of course in week zero group five school gonna be a fascinating matchup coach appreciate the time as always good luck this season I'm looking forward to catching up with you as we get closer to the fall and i can't believe it you know we are recording this on july 6th we're, get, we're, we're gonna be talking <laughs> about games in about six weeks that's right we're there <laughs> well hey, i coach. appreciate for having me nick Absolutely. Head coach Lance Bailey, Lower Cape May Regional High School football. Be sure to look out for them in week zero against Bridgeton in 2023. Thanks, Nick.